In this video, I'll show you how to enter data into Microsoft Excel workbooks. I'll also show you how to edit the data once it's in your cells. And then I'll share some tips that will help you determine how Excel is treating that data you've entered. I'll be using Microsoft Excel 365 on Windows. However, most of what I'll show you is valid across every version of Excel. If you'd like me to make a video showing Excel for Mac, drop a comment and let me know. I won't spend any time talking about why people use Microsoft Excel, the elements of the Excel window, the definitions of worksheets and cells, or the formula bar. For all that, check out this video. Let's jump into Excel. I'm starting off on a new workbook in a blank worksheet and we'll enter data bit by bit so that you can follow along. Let's select cell A1. Before we type anything, let's glance to the left of the status bar just below our Excel workbook. Excel is in ready mode. I like to think of this as though Excel is telling me it's ready for anything. Notice that every button on the home ribbon is available for clicking. You can do anything in Excel right now. If you don't have cell A1 selected, you can click it now. Then type your name into the cell, but don't press enter just yet. If you glance at the status bar, you'll see that Excel is in enter mode. This means that, let's call it Excel's attention, is focused inside of the cell where we entered text. If you're glancing at the home ribbon now, you'll see that many of the buttons are grayed out and not available for clicking. That's because Excel's attention, or its scope, is currently inside of the cell. You can format text in a cell, but that's about all you can do. One last thing, before we press enter, if you look just below the ribbon and just to the left of the formula bar, you'll see three buttons. The first is an X, which is the cancel button. If you press that, Excel discards what you were typing. The second is a check mark, which is the enter button. Clicking this button saves what you typed into the cell and leaves the cell selected. Notice that when we do this, Excel goes back into ready mode. The third button is insert function, which I talk about in a different video. Now that I've saved my name in the cell, I'm gonna press the delete key on the keyboard to clear the cell and type my name again. There are a couple of keys that we can press on the keyboard to do the same thing that the cancel and enter buttons do. The escape key is cancel and the return or enter key on the keyboard is enter. Of course, when you press the enter key on your keyboard, Excel saves the data in the cell and then it selects the next cell in your workbook. Sometimes I like to click the enter check mark instead of pressing the enter key so that the focus will stay on the cell and not change. I should mention that if you type into a cell and then click a different cell, Excel assumes that you would have clicked enter and it saves the data. Before we move on, notice that my name is not only in cell A1, but it's also displayed in the formula bar. The formula bar shows the contents of the selected cell. If I click A2, which contains nothing, the formula bar appears blank. Drop a comment if you have any questions. Let's click back on A1 and talk about modifying data in a cell. When you type on a cell that contains data, you'll see that what you type appears to replace what was in the cell before. Don't panic. Before you press enter, you can click the cancel button or press the escape key to discard what you were typing and revert to what was in the cell before. Excel only saves the data when you click or press enter. And of course, if you did that, you can click undo to reverse the action. To edit the contents of a cell that contains data, you can do any of three things. First, you can double click the cell. Let's try that. Excel places the insertion point right where we double clicked. Now, when we look at the status bar, we'll see that Excel is in edit mode. I'll press the escape key to go back to ready mode and step out of the cell. The second way to edit a cell is to click in the formula bar. The status bar shows us back in edit mode again. The third way to edit a cell is to press the F2 key on the keyboard. This places the insertion point at the end of the cell. When you use this method, you can press the left and right arrow keys to position the insertion point before you start typing. Now that we've covered the basics, let's enter some more data before we talk about formats. Click cell A2, type a number, like 25, then press enter. In cell A3, let's type a date like October 1st, 2023. Press enter. Notice that the date format appears a bit different than what we typed. Select cell A3 and look in the formula bar. Here you can see that the formula bar shows the date differently too. This is important. The formula bar always shows you what's really in a cell. For example, the formula bar will show you a formula in a cell and the worksheet will show the formula's result. The worksheet can display a cell's content differently than the formula bar, but we'll come back to that in future videos. In cell A4, Let's enter numbers and text together, like a street address. Let's type 123 West 45th Street. Press enter. Okay, click cell A3. Now let's talk about cell formats. Excel understands several different kinds of formats. 
To help show this concept, let's take a look at the number group on the home ribbon. Let's look at the format menu. By default, every cell in every workbook has the general format applied, which allows Excel to guess the format a cell should have based on its contents. However, you can choose to explicitly assign a format to a cell. As you can see here, Excel knows how to display numbers, currency, dates, times, percentages, text, and more. Let's try it out. With cell A3 selected, let's click the long date format and see what that does to the date we entered. A couple of things happened. The date changed how it appeared and the format list in the number group changed to date. If you look at the formula bar, you'll see that it hasn't changed. For most cells, I like to leave the format menu set to general. When I think about the format list, I see just two types of things, text and numbers. There are many types of numbers like currency, date, time, and so on, but for me, those formats are just all different ways to display numbers. If you leave a cell's format set at general, you'll discover that Excel will show you when it thinks a cell contains text or a number. In cell A1, my name is aligned to the left of the cell. That means Excel thinks of this content as text. Text always aligns to the left. Now you might be thinking, what if the text is aligned to the right? Let's try that. We can click the right align button on the home ribbon to make A1 right align. Notice that the right align button is active when A1 is selected. If we click another cell, it deactivates. When we click back on A1, it activates again. Let's click the right align button again to deactivate it. And my name goes back to being left aligned. In other words, text appears left aligned if the cell has no explicit horizontal alignment. Now let's look at A2. The number is aligned right. When you see a cell that is right aligned, if it has no explicit horizontal alignment, Excel thinks of the content as a number. This goes for times, percentages, dates, and more. In fact, if we make column A wider by clicking and holding the column separator between A and B, and then drag right, you'll see that our long date is right aligned. It's a number. This alignment trick might seem trivial, but it's a huge help when trying to figure out why an Excel workbook isn't behaving the way you expect. This video is part of a playlist called Introduction to Microsoft Excel. Subscribe if you'd like to learn more about Excel or see videos that answer technology questions people drop in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.